now been taken into custody on Long Island in connection with the infamous Gilgo Beach murders. The news breaking just a few hours ago, the person in custody has not yet been identified publicly. We expect that to happen this afternoon during an official court appearance. But this has really been connected to the deaths of four of the 10 women involved in this case. Right now, there are a lot of police officers, as you can see from this video here, in Massive People Park. And that's where Kristen Thorne has been positioned this morning, getting late breaking details. So Kristen, what do we know at this hour? Well, Mike, certainly I just want to say as someone who has covered this story since its inception, since 2010, this is a day, in fact, I never quite frankly thought I would see. It just had kept going on and on, and now here we are, or we believe here we are. First, I want to show you the scene here. We're here at First Avenue and Michigan Avenue in Massapequa Park. You see that red house down there? That is the house the police are focusing on. That is the house where they took a man into custody either late last night or early this morning. I spoke with a neighbor who said she saw a very large crime scene unit, what we know to be a large crime scene unit, here at the house around 11 o'clock last night. This man was taken into custody in relation to at least one set of these murders. So at, and initially, police, when they started this investigation, they thought there was one killer. Then they developed intel that perhaps there were two killers. And so this man is being taken into custody in relation to the Gilgo Four, the four sex workers that were found buried in Ocean Beach in December 2010. And let me tell you, the investigation here at the house is certainly picking up. Just about maybe 30 minutes ago, we saw officers in hazmat suits going into the house. So clearly they're in there to do some sort of forensic activity. The man, what do we know about the man who is listed as living at that house? 105 First Avenue in Massapequa Park. And this is, of course, an investigative technique we use as journalists routinely to try to figure out who lives at that house. And the man that lives at that house, his description is consistent with what police have said previously about who they believe this suspect is. Of course, we cannot say definitively, definitively at this point if that is him, but we will get that later on today. But I want to tell you, we do know that he is listed as the president and owner of an architecture firm in Manhattan. He is 59 years old, and he is a white male. The reason and I am mentioning his race as being white is important here because about six or seven years ago when I covered it, police put out a description of the suspect and at that point it was huge for us because we'd never received a, a, a description of a potential suspect and they said that it was a white male in his mid-50s or middle-aged white male and so this is consistent with that description from so many years ago. Again, police believe the man that they have in custody today is a suspect in one set of the Gilgo remains, the four sex workers who were found buried around Ocean Beach in December 2010. And when you think about the gravity of this story, a story that has captivated really the world, we have seen movies and books made out of the Gilgo Beach serial killer. And then you think about where we are right now, Massapequa Park on Long Island. And I know we say this all the time, but this is a very quiet neighborhood. This is a very nice neighborhood. And so for people who live around here to think that perhaps the man responsible for some of these murders that have stumped people for, for years and years, and really stumped law enforcement, was living right here in their quiet little neighborhood. To say that they are shocked is putting it lightly. What do you think about all of this? The whole world has been watching this case since 2010, and here it is in your little neighborhood. It's a shocker. I mean, it's a real eye-opener. And like I said, 29 years. This is the worst case I've ever seen. Have you ever seen the man that lives in that house? I probably have, but, you know, walking my dog at one time, you know, and... It, that house was generally quiet, um, so I really can't say anything about the person, you know. You know, growing up here and then obviously, you know, hearing about it and it's in your backyard and it, it's, you know, with Ocean Parkway, but, you know, the fact that it's in the exact town is uh, kind of alarming, but again, not, not the most surprising thing in the world, just given some of the information we knew, you know, 
allegedly the suspect. You know, he he worked in New York City. He worked in the build, you know, building uh, department, I believe, or he. Here are the go-go four when we talk about them: Maureen Brannard Barnes, Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, and Amber Costella. The name you're not seeing here that you're probably thinking of is Shannon Gilbert. Shannon Gilbert was the first body that was found in this area of Gilgo Beach. Police have long suspected that she is not related to these other sets of remains that they have discovered. They have maintained and just released 911 calls, not even what within the last year, that really makes it sound and that they believe that Shannon Gilbert unfortunately suffered a death not related to a murder, but to just becoming lost in the darkness there in the reeds and the swamps and unfortunately drowned. That's why her name is not listed there, but she is the reason that all these other bodies were later found. And then again, there's a whole other set of bodies we're not talking about here. But those remains are not as connected as these four. There's some remains of a, ch a child, a Jane Doe. They're, they're just kind of different cases. These four have always been thought of as connected to the same killer. The history of this case is also so interesting as someone who's covered it since day one. When I first came, the department here would not allow the FBI in to investigate this, to, to help with this investigation. Then later we had other people, other chiefs come in and they made it clear that this is that they wanted to have the FBI in. Chief Rodney Harrison created a multi-agency task force to address this issue and he is quite new to the department. So it's amazing to see where we are today.